Um, hi. All right, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. And today we're talking about Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. Guys, I've been doing this channel, I've been doing book reviews for a few years now, nearly three years, and in that time, I've gotten a lot of requests to read and review a lot of books, but there are always those few books that just stand out that I get requests for time and time again, and I just have to say, I think this book might be my most requested read ever. It's for sure up there. There was definitely a time period for a few months where I felt like nearly every single day I was getting some type of comment or DM asking me if I've read this book, suggesting that I read it, saying that it would be right up my alley, and I was just like, I need to read this book. Like, it's been on my list for so long, and Funny story, I actually attended this author event in Dallas back in February, and when you go to these events, it's kind of funny, like you see all the author names, you see the list, and there's always names that you recognize, but it's hard to remember who has written every single book. There's a lot of books, there's a lot of authors, but when I walked by Jennifer Hartman's table, right away I saw her little display of her books, there was a super long line, and I was like, oh my god, she is the author of Still Beating. I have to meet her, I have to get my hands on this book, and that is exactly what I did. I got in her line, and it was such a good experience meeting her. I met her with my friend Morgan, and both her and I were dying to get our hands on this book. And when we got up to the booth, there was literally one sitting there, and we both wanted it. And so we were like, is there any chance there's any more copies of Still Beating? And Jennifer Hartman was there with her husband, and they were so kind. She was like, I'm so sorry, I think that's my last one. We might have more in the cart. And her husband right away was like, no, I'm gonna go check, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna go find some more books in the car. And sure enough, this man got up and he sprinted out of this hotel, out of this convention center, went all the way to their car in the parking garage, came running back with like this big box of books over his shoulders. Like, it was just so kind that he took the time to do that. And Jennifer herself was just like such a sweetheart. I told her about my YouTube channel and how so many people have requested for me to read this book and that I was super excited about it. So. Got to meet her, got a little picture with her, and got her signature on this book, which just made me even more excited to read it. I just love when you can put a face to, you know, their work, and when someone is like genuinely kind and sweet and so appreciative, even if you haven't even read their stuff yet, they're just so excited to see you, they're so excited that you're there to support them, that you might read their books. And funny story too, sorry I'm going off on a rampage right here, but um, the cover of this book, I learned that this is actually her and her husband's hands. They are holding hands in this photo. They took the photo together. They actually work together as wedding photographers. And Jennifer obviously writes books now and is very good at it. But they took this photo together like in their living room and her husband made this book cover. I'm just like, I love stories like that. I think it's so cool. But anyways, regardless to say, I was already excited to read this book, but after my experience of meeting her, of getting this book, of getting her to sign it and hand it to me, I was like, okay. This book is like next up on my list. I gotta read it. Um, I was really dying for it and now I finally did it. Obviously, I dove in and oh my God, I read it in one singular day because I physically couldn't put it down. It helped that I read it on a plane, but that flight felt like it was five minutes because this book just like had my attention out the gate. I was so gripped by it. I knew vaguely what it was about, but oh my God, the concept was just like, so interesting, it's so dark, it's very twisted, do not get me wrong, this is a very heavy book, there's a lot of like, very triggering, upsetting things in it. If you're a sensitive reader, I'm gonna say right off the bat that it's not gonna be for you, but if you like some dark romance, if you like some kind of like, psychological thriller sort of aspects to your story, if you like forbidden romance, it's got like all of those tropes in it, and I'm just super, super excited to talk to you guys about it, so. As usual, I'm gonna do my little spoiler-free synopsis and then I will dive a little bit deeper and say if you have not yet read this book, leave, come back, we'll have a little book club moment after you've read it. But yeah guys, let's just get into it. So Still Beating follows this woman named Cora. And when the story opens up, she is at her sister's birthday party, she is not having a great night, uh, mostly because since it's her sister's birthday, that means she's gonna have to spend the evening with her sister's fiance who she cannot stand. His name is Dean. All of them grew up together. Cora has known him for over a decade now. They went to high school together. Her and Dean have never gotten along. He's always kind of like been a bit of a bully to her. They really have just always picked at each other. It started out as practical jokes, but like over time it kind of became more of like a, 
I genuinely don't like you sort of thing, but they've always just been around each other. And now that Dean is obviously with Cora's sister, it's at a point where she simply can't escape him. And it's so frustrating for her because the two of them just like butt heads, they couldn't be more different. And she just like does not like him. But she is here at this party trying to make the best of it, trying to kind of avoid him. And the night goes a little bit awry. She has a little bit too much to drink. Everybody leaves, the bar starts to clear out and Cora finds herself without her wallet. Somehow her wallet got misplaced, stolen, whatever it is. So she is trying to figure out a way to get home. She's calling everyone that she knows, everybody that was at the party. Nobody is answering her, including her sister. So she has no way to get home. She doesn't have her wallet to pay for a cab. She really needs a ride. It's too far to walk. She's in heels and a little dress. She needs a ride home essentially. So after going through every single person in her phone book, the last person that she knows is nearby and could give her a ride is none other than Dean. And she would frankly rather do anything but call him, but she's kind of desperate at this point. So she gives him a call and of course he answers on the first ring and he agrees to come and pick her up. And she reluctantly sits there and waits for him. And while she's waiting for him, she ends up sort of catching the eye of this man that is lingering outside of the bar. He's not giving her good vibes. He's kind of trying to talk to her. She's not into it. She's waiting for Dean to show up. And even though uh, she doesn't want to be in the car with Dean, by the time he gets there, it's a way better alternative to being around this man any longer. So gets in the car with Dean, immediately they start bickering as he's taking her home. And um, very shortly into the ride, long story short, um, they see cop car lights behind them. Dean pulls over and the two of them are kidnapped. <laughs> the windows break, chaos ensues. Uh, they're each ripped out of the car. Cora's knocked out, everything goes black. They get kidnapped and uh, whenever they come to, whenever Cora wakes up, uh, she finds herself in this dark and dank basement. Uh, she's chained up and uh, she's not alone because Dean is in this basement with her as well. So this story is really split into three parts. You have this first part, which is the two of them being kidnapped by this horrible man being chained up together in this <laughs> ultimate forced proximity situation that you could ever imagine. Uh, <laughs> there's pretty much no one that Cora would ever want to be trapped alone with than Dean, but now they are literally trapped alone and kind of fighting for their lives, having to endure horrifying things. Like they see a deeper part of each other than anyone else has ever seen. This is like a horrifying, traumatic, Thing that the two of them go through and so that's really the first chunk of the book that's the first third it's all Cora's perspective and then from there as you can expect um, you know the story goes on and then you kind of have to deal with the aftermath of everything that comes out of this situation that the two of them are in together and you get Dean's point of view and then you kind of flip back to Cora's point of view it is one big hot mess. It is very much an enemy's situation stuck together, forced proximity. But keep in mind, forced proximity is also happening with not only your enemy, but your sister's fiance. And it's often known that if two people get stuck together long enough, especially in a traumatic situation, forming a trauma bond, uh, things can get a little intense and a little bit messy and feelings can arise and be had and just everything that you could possibly imagine that could go wrong <laughs> or blow up in this story happens and it was just so intense it again it was so gripping like right from the beginning like the story just starts out and like it's pedal to the metal right away they you know get kidnapped they're stuck here together just constantly things are happening you can't put it down every single time the chapter ends you have to know what's gonna happen like it was impossible for me to go to sleep until i finished this book so it was so good it's like one of those concepts where i'm like how did she come up with this like it's so genius like the idea alone i'm just like oh my gosh getting kidnapped together like we read a lot of dark romances and a lot of kind of dark romances that are about people kind of trauma bonding or people that have had rough pasts and you know coming together to find like common ground with someone else that has had a rough past but these two literally have to go through the worst thing you could possibly imagine together and they have to work together despite the fact that 
they dislike each other and <laughs> despite the fact that they have all this history of never working together and always going against each other like Dean and Cora's relationship is just very intense it gets very intense and then they're supposed to come out of this situation and kind of like you know everyone expects them to return to normal life and just get back to it but nobody knows what went on down there between them and around them besides the two of them so it's a little hard for dean to like go back to his fiance and just happily ever after and then for cora to like go back to her life and just be alone like it's it's crazy that's all i will say again this book is very dark it is not for the faint of heart um i think you could probably kind of like assume what might happen if a creepy old man kidnaps a woman i'm just saying trigger 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 if there's things that you are sensitive to you're not going to like this book there's like gory aspects violent aspects um bodily aspects it's rough but as horrible as it is to say um it was really good <laughs> it was really really good it was done really well like it was fucked up but <sighs> it was one of those books where you're reading it and you're like okay I'm thinking the worst but like is this gonna happen I feel like this is what's about to happen and sure enough that happens and more and it just keeps going and I just thought it was so good it was just so well written every aspect of it like even just there were such like difficult situations in this and you're just like how are they gonna get out of this what are they gonna do but I just thought it was done so perfectly the end just like wrapped up so beautifully made my heart explode i adored it and seriously after reading this i was like i have to go dm jennifer hartman and be like i'm obsessed with you you are incredible i'm gonna read every single thing that you have written it was just like one of those books where you're just like damn like this author is so good like she deserves more hype and i know she's getting more hype i actually believe that still beating has um like the rights for it have been bought and it's actually going to be traditionally published now so Props to you, Jennifer, because we're on a first name basis now because we met. <laughs> but um, yeah, guys, that's really like the spoiler free sort of review that I can give of this book is generally I freaking loved it. If you're a dark romance fan, um, you're going to love it. I'm kind of thinking like Haunting Adeline, Devil's Night series by Penelope Douglas. Like if you like those types of things and you can handle those types of things, uh, I, think, I think you'll really, really like this. But yeah, at this point, if you have not yet read this book, Go and read it and come back because now I want to get a little bit further into my thoughts with spoilers. So right off the bat, Dean and Cora, I loved their banter. I loved the angst between them. I loved the tension. Like I could tell that we didn't like Dean and we had like some things against him and clearly there was like a lot of history there, but I wasn't sure how I was supposed to feel about him. I was like, do I not like him? But as soon as they were down in that basement, as soon as they were kidnapped, Dean was just, I mean, in some ways you're like, okay, he's doing the bare minimum, right? Like he's trying to get her out of here. He's like telling the man not to touch her, not to get near her or whatever. But he just becomes such a like protector of her. And he just, I literally, every single thing that he said to her, the little like bonding moments that the two of them had together being stuck down there when he was forced to, watch her repeatedly get assaulted, R-worded, all the things. Like, can you imagine a worse situation? Like when that initially happened, I was like, oh my God, is he really about to do this to her right here with Dean right there? Imagine like the person you like the least in the world and like it's a guy and he's standing there and he's watching you like be defiled. Like, can you imagine a more traumatic, awful, disgusting, thing like you would just hit absolute rock bottom so fast and i started to wonder i was like okay there's a reason that this creep is keeping them together what is gonna happen here like what is he gonna do to dean i kept asking myself and right about the time that i was like is he gonna is he gonna make them are they gonna have to and it happened i was like again not gonna lie obviously it's awful it's terrible but i was like nuts and I didn't like want it and uh, again so traumatic like literally gun to your head like 
bang your fiance's sister while I watch like the creepy ass old weird man that I am. Like it was so fucked up. It was so fucked up, but like, ugh, the way that they had to like, they had to do it. They had to like talk each other through it. Like when she was going through it and he was like, just focus on me, focus on me. Like he's not here, whatever, like doing what he could to help her and then when he had to do his thing with her and he was like trying to get her to just focus on the like pressure point, whatever. Like it was the worst possible thing, but the two of them were like able to fight through it together and like form this insane bond and like realize that all these years, like all this time that they've spent like bickering and fighting back and forth, it's like, it turns out they each <laughs> had like crushes on each other initially and just, didn't know how to communicate, which is so freaking common in books and common in life. Like people just don't know how to explain their feelings. And it's very much a like, you were kind of the one that got away and now you're with my sister and now we're stuck down here together and we're probably gonna die. And like, what the fuck do we do now? Like, it was just so crazy. I do have to say like one thing I was really impressed about with this book is I felt like the pacing was so perfect. Like somehow I read it on my Kindle actually. I kind of like switched back and forth, but on my Kindle, every single chapter was perfectly eight minutes. It was like eight minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes. Like it was just long enough that like you'd finish a chapter and you wanted to like jump into another one. And the way that this story was split into the three parts of basically, I can't remember what they were called, but how the whole first part was like the kidnapping from Cora's point of view. And then you'd switch to Dean's point of view, the kind of like aftermath. And then you switched back to Cora's. Like the way that each of those sections was perfectly like hundred pages, hundred pages, hundred pages. Like I just thought it was paced so perfectly. Cause you can't help but wonder like when the kidnapping happened, I was like, is this going to be the whole book? Like obviously that wasn't super pleasant to read about. Like you got to really see their relationship develop and a lot happened between them and there was a lot of growth and character development so like parts of it were good but like what was happening to them what Cora especially was going through was awful so I'm like I don't want to read this for like 300 pages but it was genuinely like the perfect amount of time of like you going through it and seeing what they went through and them kind of like escaping and the aftermath like I just didn't feel like any part of the story dragged or that there was any part where like too long was spent on it or too little was spent on it. I really just thought it was perfect. I also feel like Jennifer did a really good job of like not going into detail in the parts that didn't need to go into detail. Like when the first time the, I keep just wanting to call him like the John Wayne Gacy man, like came downstairs and did what he did to Cora. I was like, are we gonna get like a really graphic description of all the nitty gritty details of what happens here like she perfectly painted the picture where like you get the vibe you got the beginning pieces but once it got to the part where it's just awful and like we didn't need to know the details she cut it off and i kind of like appreciated that i just really felt like she <laughs> included all the details in the parts that we want and that we like would enjoy or need to see but then the parts that like we didn't need to go too far into she didn't include because there's just some books that i've read before that are dark books twisted books and it's like you get every single like image every single second of that scene and I'm like don't care to read that <laughs> like it's just not fun like it makes me feel icky I'm grossed out like I don't need that so I just thought she did a really really good job of that also you know obviously when they come back like after they eventually escape there's a lot they got to deal with uh they're both like horribly trauma bonded to one another, but their lives are not together. Dean's life is with um, Cora's sister and then Cora is really kind of on her own. And, you know, I feel like the family and their friends kind of gave them like a couple of weeks and then kind of figured they would get back to life, which of course that's an insane thought. Uh, Cora's sister was kind of, I don't know, she was an interesting character. You're obviously kind of like supposed to hate her, I feel like. You're supposed to really be rooting for Cora and Dean since they're the main characters of the story. So there were parts of her sister that I found to be kind of just like, oh my God, the way that she was like bitching and moaning and complaining that he wouldn't like touch her, that they hadn't been intimate together in like a few weeks. Like, sister, the man just got kidnapped. Like, I guess in her mind she thought, oh, he's been like locked up, like he'll be dying to see me, which, I guess would make sense in any other circumstance, but she doesn't know the full extent of what he went through, of what Cora went through. So like, it kind of makes sense if she just thought they were literally just chained up and didn't realize 
what they were going through and what they had to do together and what happened to them. So, but I just thought it was so selfish of her to be like, you've been home for three weeks. Like, you don't wanna, you don't wanna bang? It's just like, sister, are you serious? No. Um, but then, you know, I, I also kind of felt like, what did you think happened here? Like, you thought that he just like had them chained up for fun? Like, I just felt like she wasn't very understanding. But it's hard, cause it's like, you have to put her, put yourself in her shoes, right? If you've been with this man for like 10 years and you were supposed to get married and he's been kidnapped and you're out searching for him and doing everything in your power to get him back and then he comes back from being kidnapped and you find out that like he's been banging your sister in private, like it was forced, he had to do it, but I'm sure that's like an impossible thing to deal with. So in some form or another, I kind of felt like I had to give her some grace, but obviously it was so frustrating. And her like blaming the sister, her getting mad at the sister that the two of them had formed this trauma bond, like, I mean, what did you expect, dude? Like, how can you, I don't know. Like, I'm sure it's very hard if someone's been in your life for a decade to just accept like, okay, now he wants to go be with my sister and like, we're not gonna get married anymore. Like, it was obviously a very difficult situation. And that was the entire point of this book. Like, it was a forbidden, romance it was like a love triangle like it was supposed to be messed up and twisted it was supposed to be painful to read but obviously the whole time you're like anxious because you're like the sister's gonna find out this is gonna come to a head it's gonna explode and i just have to say i felt like the ending was done so well i just have this thing where i love books that are just realistic like so often books just want to like wrap up in a pretty little bow and are like you know, I just thought the two of them were just gonna get together, honestly. I kind of thought that the sister was gonna be mad, but they were gonna be like, screw it, we're gonna be together. But clearly the two of them were not good for each other. Like they needed to be together to some extent. They needed someone to talk to in the beginning, but over time you could tell that they were not good for each other and that by being together and only being with each other, they were stuck in that basement and they were never gonna get over what they went through. And you know, Cora especially, it, it was kind of crappy. I did think it was a little crappy that Dean was like, I just want you, I want you to forget about your sister. Like, I want you. But then the second that <laughs> Cora accepted it and was like, yes, I'll be with you. He kind of like pulled back and was like, we're not good for each other. I was like, sir, she gave you what you wanted and now you're mad. Like, make that make sense. It didn't really make a lot of sense. But it was the right thing to do in the end. The two of them really did need time apart to heal from each other because if they never separated, they were just gonna like, continue to live in this pain and this trauma for all this time and like that's not good for anybody so i thought it was so well done the way that dean left and that the two of them had to go their separate ways and there was a time jump and the two of them kind of came back together and you just know that they made it work and i really love when stories do that because i think it's like it's the right thing to do and this was a messy story. It needed to have a messy ending. It wasn't gonna just be like butterflies and rainbows, happily ever after. Like the two of them went through some serious shit and they needed to work it out. So I just, I thought the ending was so good. I was so impressed with it. Literally at no point in the story was I bored. I adored Dean. I thought he was just absolutely everything. I just thought it was great. I loved it so much and I'm very excited to read Jennifer Hartman's other books. And I have to say thank you to every single person that has recommended me to read this book over the years because you had it right. <laughs> you knew I would love it and you were so right. This was really so freaking good and I am so happy that I read it. Uh, but yeah guys, if you read Still Beating, I would love to hear all your thoughts down below. If you've read Jennifer Hartman's other books, uh, tell me which one is your favorite. I have, it's like a duet, an optimist guide to heartbreak and a pessimist guide to love. I have these from her as well, so probably gonna read these soon. I think she signed these too, um, cause I got them. Yep, I got them at the very same little book fair thing because they were just so cute and I had to have them. But um, yeah, I know Lotus is also a super popular book by her. Uh, a ton of people have read that one and I think it kinda connects to this in a way. Like there was a cameo that happened in the story that I believe kinda leads into Lotus, but yeah. Anyways, if you've read any of her books, have any suggestions, anything similar to this that you think I would like, I'd love to hear it. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.